Together with Neuro Sports Bitch, yeah, the twins, they be checking in. Stacking up green is the scene that you're stepping in. Winning is a trend, and we stay making dollars. Nerd talk with the sports bet scholars. We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. My name is Nicholas Earl. It's just going to be yours truly today. Um, Tim, Tim unavailable for this show. But with that being said, we got 25 games to go over. We get three in the NHL. I believe we get 14 in the MLB and we get eight in the NBA. 15 in the MLB. No, 14 in the MLB and eight in the NBA. So we, got a, we still get a decent show for today. Uh, but before we get into today's games, before we get into today's slate, we'll take a look back at what happened yesterday, what went right, and what went wrong in the world of sports betting. And yesterday was a much better day. I, I swear, it's been it's been like a, kind of been like either really good or really bad the last three days. Because on Sunday, it was up 5.6 units. Yesterday, or two days ago, down four units. Uh, and, then, uh, and then yesterday, uh, up 4.6 units. So... It's either been a really good day or a really bad day the last three days. We've had two really good days, though, and I hope to keep the really good days going. Um, And uh, let's take a look at what happened yesterday. I started off really solid. I got the first five under four and a half with Pittsburgh and Detroit. Uh, Orioles first five money line was a winner. Brewers first or Brewers full game was a winner. Plus one twenty five there. Capitals get the job done, plus 125 over the Detroit Red Wings, 2-1 to one victory there. Ottawa, first period, came up short. It was 2-0 at the end of the first period. The game ended up actually finishing 2-0 um, in that game there. Um, what? How good has Anthony Stolarz looked with this, um, with this Florida Panthers team, which makes them look so dangerous, um, having a backup goaltender like that. Montreal was as easy as it gets. It was six nothing at one point in that game, and ended up finishing nine three Canadians. Um, as can we? You know, I'm, I'm I'm riding off the Flyers. They're 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 done. This this Flyers team is done. They've given up, or they've ran out of they've ran out of gas. Uh, this Flyers team, uh, they get blown out by the Canadians. Uh, Hurricanes minus one eleven. They get their revenge win after losing four one to the Boston Bruins in Carolina. They beat the Boston Bruins four to one last night. So nice little winner there. Yankees minus one was a push. They win three two. There, uh, Twins plus one sixty two. They lose uh, six to three there. Uh, KC first five somehow pushed. They scored three runs in the bottom of the fifth to tie it up and push the first five, which I will one hundred percent take. Um, first five under four was a winner, three nothing Cardinals at the end of four, uh, between Philly and St. Louis and ended up being, um, ended up being three nothing final in that game. If I remember right. Yeah, that was a really good under day under game there. Uh, one that should have hit, which was incredibly frustrating Dallas team total over three and a half full game over six. Um, it was three to two at the end of the second period. We get no goals in the third, none. Very, very frustrating into the game there. Uh, but we did get uh, Winnipeg team total over three, the full game over five and a half. That was a nice little double winner there. Colorado first five took a shot with them. They lost the first five, three to one. Seattle minus one. They win five, nothing. That was a rather easy. I saw a lot of people on Arizona for whatever reason. Um, Cubbies plus 120 was a nice little winner there. A nice little bounce back after they lose uh, that eight, nothing lead the, the previous game. Uh, and then Sharks, they had a 2 nothing lead, and they lost in overtime. So kind of a frustrating end to the night there with uh, with the Sharkies losing. But it is what it is. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I took a shot at a plus-190 dog, and they made it to overtime. So it is what it is. I've moved on one game so far, and, of course, this line has eh, kind of moved against me a couple of cents. So not, not entirely thrilled there. I've moved on one hockey game, and that is it so far. I've moved on the Edmonton Oilers, which I understand. I understand. Most likely no McDavid in this game, and I, I'm fine with that. But we'll head over to the chat, and then we will get into today's card. 
Uh, what's up, my guys? Let's get it. Let's catch it. Hit the like button, people. Show some appreciation. Subscribe and share. Tim A, you know the rest of the same. My dog. Uh, we will be going over the NBA day. We will be going over the NBA. Uh, Road Warriors beat the Fakers last night. They control their own destiny. They will win these uh, last few easy games and be seven or eight and be the hottest team out uh, right now uh, on a win streak. Um, there you go. Uh, it, unfortunately, they'd be playing, what, the, the Nuggets in the first round potentially or the Thunder? I mean, the Thunder may be a, a decent matchup there. Uh, Top-tier teams want to see them in the first round. Uh, uh, be very afraid, everyone, if you're a 1-2-3 OKC mini or and especially Denver. We'll see. Uh, big matchup there, Denver and Minnesota tonight. We'll get into that game later. Uh, Phoenix is still losing and sliding down. I think I think Phoenix first quarter or first half is a great bet tonight. I haven't made the move on it, but I, I think that Phoenix, after getting – Run out of the building the way they did last night. I think that's a great play. Uh, they got a haircut last night by the Clips and at home. Yeah. Uh, Claw didn't play. Uh, Bucks last night easy against Boston and and Greek Freak got hurt. Yikes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, OKC dethroned the Kings. Yep. Uh, hit yesterday, KC Braves and Yankees. Yeah, I saw that the another Michigan goal from Sveshnikov. Um they look Carolina looks really good right now. Um, which is scary because their first round matchup could potentially be the Islanders. Um LA Kings are huge frauds. I don't know if I'd call them frauds, but they they definitely definitely did piss me off last night because I had I had them tied into a couple two teamers and I had a I threw five bucks at a seven teamer and my only loser was the freaking Kings. Because I had, I think, the Maple Leafs, the Hurricanes, the Lightning, the Stars, the Avalanche, and then it ended with the Kings, or the Kraken and the Kings. And, of course, the Kings, the bigger, the bigger, one of the bigger favorites to choke that away. So that was frustrating last night. Morning, moving again all day. 9-3, and three, plus 7.53 yesterday on the site. Beautiful. Yeah. What's up? No one is scared of the Warriors, says Tim. Nuggets, Suns, and Magic today. Uh, Sunday match today. I was looking towards. I was looking towards the T Wolves. I thought that line was too much, but that that may just be. Um, I don't know. That 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 may just be me though. Phoenix first half might be a great play, but last night it was the same spot. LL and they got cooked. I I'm looking more first quarter with them, but yeah. Uh, let's go, Timmy Magic City. Uh, and who's winning the Vesna? Not the Jets goalie. I why not Hellebuck? Please tell me why Hellebuck wouldn't be your Vesna winner. Please tell me who would be your Vesna winner if Hellebuck is not your Vesna winner. I'll wait. Uh, because when you look at goaltenders this year, um, Connor Hellebuck is the leader in goal saved above average. He is the, I want to say, I want to need to get at least, what, I want to say at least four. 40 games started among goalies that have started at least 40 games. He is number one in goals allowed. And I want to find a save percentage um, because I believe he's one of the top ones there as well. Um, so I, I would love to know. I would love to know who's your goaltender that you would have. UC Soros is not even a nominee for me. He's not. It's Hellebuck. Even though he's been hurt, it's Demko and it's Bobrovsky. Those are my three. I I I would have I would have Shusterkin and Swayman and even Ukopeka Lokinen above UC Soros. Yes, I get it. He's been better as of late. But overall. If the Vesna Trophy is the entire season, Saros doesn't even sniff the top five for me. I don't trust Hellebuck. Hellebuck, the full season long, though, has been the best goalie in hockey. I don't think you can really argue it. The, over the entire season, he's been the best goalie in hockey. I, I'm, And I don't think it's particularly close. 
there's there's some guys up there that that'll that'll have their arguments, but I, I seriously do not see anybody better than Hellebuck, other than Demko, and Demko's been hurt. So, no, I do trust Hellebuck, and uh, I th- I, I kind of want to trust Hellebuck in the playoffs potentially. We'll get into the NHL card. Then we have three games uh, in the NHL. I've moved on one. And we are going to start it off here with the St. Louis Blues and the Chicago Blackhawks with the Blackhawks as or the Blues as minus one minus two thirty five favorites with a total of five and a half in this game. Now, one thing we've noticed from the Blues as of late, uh, I believe they are mathematically eliminated or with or with like a, a Vegas win or a Vegas point. If Vegas gets a point tonight or St. Louis loses in overtime or loses in general. Um, there's eliminated, it's a 0.1% chance the Blues make the playoffs. So they're not making the playoffs. So these are two teams playing for exercise right now. And one thing I've noticed with the Blues is they've played a, a few games where lately where they've just rolled out the uh, rolled out the pucks and, and they just had shootouts type of thing here. Um, and I do have this game projected for 5.86 goals. So I understand why this line is – way it is um let me get up the cash flow here and let me get up the um in here seven percent of the tickets 47 percent of the cash is on the blackhawks 2800 tickets in do i think the blues should be laying this type of number with be- basically being an eliminated team no and do i kind of want to take shots with underdogs with two teams that have been eliminated kind of i would only look blackhawks in this game i i have i have the blues around Try to do math in my head real quick. Around 180 favorites, 185 favorites in this game. So I don't think they should be a team that is laying minus 235 at home here. Do I do I have really much interest in betting this game though? Not particularly. Um, I can only look over the total in this game. I want to look more towards overs with teams that are not going to be playing any type of competitive hockey. Two teams that are eliminated, especially at five and a half. I could see the defensive intensity just not being there, like w- which we've seen with the Blues a little bit as of late. Um, but I mean, and we've seen with this, uh, we, we've seen with this history. Last game that these two play- teams played was on December twenty third. It was a seven five Blues victory. Um, and one thing I also want to know is: is it going to be Morassic or is it going to be Soderblom? If it's Soderblom. I will take the over five and a half in this game. If it's Marasic, I'll probably stay off. This line opened up at a 244, it's down to a 227. Line opened up at a six, it's down to a five and a half. So we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a move towards the Blackhawks. I'm interested in Chicago in this game. I'm interested in Chicago in this game. Do I really want to bet against the Blues at home, though? Not particularly. Uh, So this will be a stay off at the moment. This slate, other than the middle game here, which we'll get into in a second, Vegas and Edmonton, this slate kind of sucks because it's one team that there are there are th- half the teams on this on this um, on this slate are eliminated, and these are two of the two of the three teams that are eliminated. So, um, but yeah, it would be an over for me, be an over for me probably if I'm looking at this game, but uh, it's a pass. Hockey season is over. Who cares? It's baseball season. Otter. Ottinger? Ottinger has sucked this year. He's been, once again, Ottinger is like Soros. He's been better as of late, but if you look at the whole season, Ottinger is not a Vesna caliber um, goaltender, this year, goaltender this year. Not happening. Supness. So what's up, Lex? Uh, first period over. I don't hate that whatsoever. Maybe you look towards a Blackhawks first period. I think could be interesting as well if you don't want to trust the full game. Butch Navis, two points, Cairo assists. And uh, Blackhawks to score first is two to one. I'm kind of interested in that. Mirage confirmed. Thank you. I'm interested in the Blackhawks at this number. I'm interested in the Blackhawks at this number. I'm not going to be laying this much with the Blues who are already eliminated or 0.1% chance of making the playoffs. So that is that. Uh, we'll get into the next matchup here. The only one that I have bet so far, I did a free pick video on this game last night. We have the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights. This line opened up at 145 yesterday, and within about three hours, it went down to a 133. It's continued to plummet down to 113. I got in at 118 last night on FanDuel. 
Line opened up at a six and a half at plus money. It's now a six at um, minus 116. So a move towards the under and a move towards the Golden Knights. And I know exactly why the, the line moved towards the Golden Knights. And usually I don't like going up against market moves like this. I I mean, I that does worry me. Here's the pretty plain, simple reason why this line's moving the way it has. Connor McDavid's probably not playing in this game. Um, and with McDavid not playing in this game, I'll look for some uh, other players to step up. Um, and... Uh, when we look at this potential starting lineup here with McDavid out, I would look towards Ryan Nugent Hopkins props with Dreisaitl and Hyman on the top line. Uh, we have Henrique with Fogel and Kane on the second line, McLeod with Perry and Holloway on the third line. I would look towards Nugent Hopkins, who I think is going to be moving up um, potentially here uh, for props. I look for them to step up with no McDavid in the lineup. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, McDavid's out. We got to bet Vegas. I I don't agree with that statement. Like, uh, And we've seen this before. Teams with their star player out, the first game step up. And I look for them to do that in this game here. I know I've, I've not beaten the line movement in this game because I bet it last night, but I wanted to do a video on this game. And maybe I should have in the video said wait and uh, bet this when the line drops a little bit more. But when you look at this Vegas Golden Knights team, they're not a team I particularly trust at the moment. They've lost back-to-back games, granted, on the road. And they've played six of the last seven games on the road. The only game they played at home was home against the Vancouver Canucks, and they won that game 6-3. to three. Uh, On the flip side, uh, we have the Edmonton Oilers, who are fighting for, the, fighting for first place in the division still. Because um, when we look at what the Oilers' situation is, they have two games in hand on the uh, Vancouver Canucks. And they trail by five points. So this is a team that when you look at the Oilers here, maybe the Oilers to win the division is worth a look because they play Vegas tonight. I like them to beat Vegas tonight. They play Arizona and then Vancouver, San Jose, Arizona, and Colorado. Three very winnable games with two games against Arizona, one against San Jose. Um, and I'm kind of interested to see what that prop would be for the Oilers to make the full comeback and take the Pacific division away from the Canucks. And um, that would be plus 225 for the Oilers to win the division. I'm actually kind of interested in making a small future there on the Oilers to win the Pacific division. Cause I like them to win tonight. And I want to take a look real quick. Cause I want, I, w- I want to dive a little bit deep into this. Uh, the Canucks, have four games left. They get a game against Edmonton, which I would probably like Edmonton in that game because it's in Edmonton. They play Calgary, and then they end the year in Winnipeg, who could be fighting for the second seed in the Central Division. So this is actually, I think, a very favorable race for the Edmonton Oilers. Granted, the Oilers will be playing a lot more games in the short stand uh, because they'll have two back-to-backs, and that last game against Colorado in Colorado – will be the third game in four nights for them. And they'll have a third game in four nights against San Jose. So they have a really condensed schedule because they'll be playing the 10th, the 12th, the 13th, the 15th, the 17th, and the 18th. So kind of a tough schedule there for the Edmonton Oilers, but they got easy opponents to be able to potentially move up and steal this division away from from the Vancouver Canucks. And I'm actually kind of interested in the Oilers to win that division because I'm not high on this Canucks team right now. And maybe that means I take a little bit of Arizona tonight, but I don't trust Arizona. So here's the tough part is whether or not, if I think Edmonton wins tonight and Vancouver wins tonight, does that number go down if both those teams win tonight? Or does that line go from a 225 to a 250? Um, So I got got to sit back and think about that. I would like to take some Oilers to win the Pacific um, division. Uh, but for right now, I'm just on the Oilers' money line in this game. Pretty plain and simple for this spot. I look for them to step up without McDavid. VGK money line. Marcus goal, Eichel assists. I remember those during the playoffs last year. Morning, Nick. Morning. Uh, on the usual blues and under. Fair. Uh, anytime point, Bouchard and Hyman anytime goal. I could see that. That Sharks game sucked. Yeah, they lost in overtime. That was, that was frustrating there. Uh, hurdle assist, Eichel assist, plus 351. There you go. Uh, I'd want the Capitals and Islanders to make the playoffs. No Philly, Pittsburgh, Detroit. I kind of agree with that. Um, I kind of do. Is Aiden Hill playing? I think it's still Thompson. Is Aiden Hill healthy?
Let me, come, let me see here. It's Aiden Hill. No, I'm seeing the list of goaltenders as um, – or um, the goalies on the roster um, as Logan Thompson and Yuri Patura. And this is still a team that's dealing with injuries – uh, Mark Stone, William Carrier, Aiden Hill, Nicholas Waugh, Nick, uh, Alex Petrangelo, Chandler Stevenson, which will all magically be healthy for game one of the playoffs. So, uh, which will make them a very difficult wild card team, which will basically screw over um, any any division winner. But yeah, I do agree with you. Phoenix first quarter, first half after getting embarrassed last night at home by LAC, they was let they was down thirty five at one point uh, in the game, and now they can get some back tonight on this. LA, yes. Short-term revenge, I kind of, I, I really do like that. The the number is kind of expensive for them. We will be getting into the NBA after the MLB, though. We'll head into the final matchup here, where we have the Vancouver Canucks taking on the, the uh, Arizona Coyotes in this one. Here we have the Canucks as minus two sixty favorites in this spot, with a total of six and a half in this game. Now this is the Arizona Coyotes on a second half of a back-to-back. They played in Seattle last night, and Seattle minus one was as easy as it gets. Uh, I saw a lot of love for the uh, for the Arizona Coyotes. I didn't understand why, um, and uh, Seattle took care of business, um, which was very very nice to see. Um, I'm currently trying to get up the uh, the numbers from last night, um, and actually, wow, Arizona was the better team uh, when you look at expected goals. Granted. Most of those was when they were down, and probably Seattle let up offensively, but Decord looked pretty good last night because uh, the Arizona Coyotes created 4.84 expected goals for uh, compared to 1.6, so kind of an interesting little dynamic there. And may, maybe after a blowout loss like that, I get it. Arizona's already eliminated, but I expect – I expect Ingram and Net tonight. Uh, after we saw, um, after we saw, uh, it was Vamelka last night, if I remember right. Um, and it could be the Smith in Net. It could also be Silvos. So I'm not a hundred percent sure um, who it's going to be for the Vancouver Canucks tonight. I'm interested in the Arizona Coyotes in this game, though. And I'm I'm interested in them in the first period and, and 20 minutes only. Look for them because I see this as a game where Arizona leads at the end of the first period, but uh, Vancouver wins this game full game. Um, and uh, I just think this line's too wide with the way the Vancouver Canucks are playing right now. And I'm getting plus 170 in the first five innings over on Caesars um, for this game. Uh, so I am looking at... Um, I'm looking at this first period, I think for the, um, for the Arizona Coyotes, this is a team that they're filled with a bunch of young talent and I look for them to bounce back tonight, uh, with the better goaltender in net with, with, um, Ingram potentially here. I, I have to see if it was Ingram, uh, cause I'm not hundred percent sure. I really didn't watch that Arizona game last night, uh, too much. Um, it was for Melka last night. Okay, good. Um, I look for them to maybe show show some heart there in the first period um, at plus 170. I'll take a shot with that. Uh, so I'll be on the Oilers and I'll be on the um, I'll be on the the Yotes first period in this game. Arizona first period. Yes, we'll see about Golden State. Whoever they play, uh, be round one. Yeah. Tim not showing up today. No, uh, he's not available. Uh, they're they're finishing the uh, helping my mom. He's finishing helping my mom move. Uh, I want the desert dog revenge here. Yotes and under. I think if you like the Yotes, especially with it being the second half of a back to back with them, I would recommend the first period rather than the full game. That's just me personally though. Uh, and I'm I'm locking that in as we speak. Um, Arizona first period plus one seventy. Uh, for this game after getting just embarrassed last night. Um, well, I'll take some, I'll take some first period with Arizona in this game. Bucks magic game over total points, easy money. We'll, we'll see. 
Um, we'll be getting into the NBA after the baseball card, which we will start the baseball card here uh, with a game starting at 110 uh, between the LA Dodgers and the Minnesota Twins. Let me shift over here uh, to baseball uh, for my my line history and my cash flow and my ticket numbers and all that fun stuff uh, where we have uh, let's all markets scheduled. There we go. Get a, we have getaway day. The latest game starts at 8 o'clock tonight. So we have a lot of early baseball. And we're going to kick it on off here with the L.A. Dodgers and the Minnesota Twins. The Dodgers minus 180 favorites. Total of 8.5 in this game here. Uh, let's take a look at the line history in this one. Chris Paddock and Bobby Miller in this one here. Um, this line opened up at a minus 180. It's down to a 159 for the Dodgers. So we do have a move towards the Minnesota Twins. Line opened up at a 9 at even money. It's down to an 8.5 as well. So we do have a move towards this under here as well. As for the tickets and the cash, uh, we got nothing in this game. 67% of the tickets are on the Dodger run line, and that's all Action Network is giving me, 14,378 tickets in. Um, and for me, this one's pretty plain and simple. I've been doing this every game. It's slightly down, but this is, this is an experiment for the full season. I understand it may not be profitable the first two weeks. And I understand that this may not be profitable the full year, um, but I'm getting a plus 145. I'm taking the Minnesota Twins here on Fanatics um, for this game. And it's just me betting against the Dodgers, continuing to do that, uh, which um, I think it's down about three-ish units, two, two and change, something along those lines. Um, but I, I'm, I'm well aware of just a couple wins, and it'll be back into the black. Uh, and this is a season-long endeavor, um, and we'll see how it does. Uh, so uh, do, uh, the uh, Minnesota Twins plus 145 for me uh, in this game. Keep it pretty plain and simple, continuing to continuing to bet against the Dodgers here uh, for this matchup. Um, taking a look at the pitchers real quick before we move on. Bobby Miller. Um, had a good first start, gave up no one runs on two hits, one walk, 11 strikeouts, and six innings pitched against the Cardinals. In his second start, did not have a very good appearance. Only went one and two-thirds, gave up five earned runs on four hits, two walks, three strikeouts, and an inning and two-thirds against the Chicago Cubs. I'm very high on this Cubs team, so I, I mean, I think that Cubs offense is going to be really good, and they showed it off there. Chris Paddock had an okay start, four innings, only four innings, but two earned runs on six hits, two walks, and two strikeouts. So he had a pretty decent start, or he had an okay start in his first one against the Brewers. Uh, I'll look for him to have a decent start here today uh, against the Dodgers. Head over to the chat. Uh, oh man, uh, no Timmy. Hey, I'm still gonna do it. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm still going over there. Yeah, uh, I'm never fading the Dodgers. Fair enough. Uh, I'll, I'll be on the Kraken puck line again tomorrow once uh, the line becomes available. Who does the Kraken play tomorrow? Uh, I'm assuming a bad team. Sharks. Yeah, I can see the Kraken puck line against a bad team like the Sharks. Yep. Out of 10, you win seven Dodger games. Fair. Uh, the Dodgers own them. I said it before. It doesn't matter where it at. Yeah, fair enough. I understand I'm not a lot of people um, – I understand a lot of people are going to be on the Dodgers. The public's always on the Dodgers. Dodger run line. Dodger run line. Bookie bets three hits. There you go. Uh, he said he's going to continue to fade the Dodgers. Yes, it's an experiment for me the full season because this team has a win total of 103 and a half. I, I have them as a 100, 100, 101 win team. They could be the best team in baseball and still go under their win total, which tells me there's value in going against them here for me personally. Buxton four, plus 400 home run might be worth a shot. Oh, I don't mind that. Is Correa game, uh, good anymore? Meh. Dodger first five over two and a half. And then Marco said, Marco saying, what up, bro? Road Warriors tool down the fakers. Yes, we know. Uh, but we'll move into the next matchup here. The Philadelphia Phillies are at the St. Louis Cardinals. The Phillies is minus 135 favorites. Total of seven and a half in this game. We got Aaron Nola taking on Lance Lynn. 
Line opened up at a 130. It's up to a 152 now for the Phillies. So we have a decent move towards the Phillies. This line opened up at an 8, got up to an 8.5, back down to an 8, and now down to a 7.5. Um, so we have a move towards the under, and we have a move towards the Phillies in this game here. Uh, let's take a look at the cash flow in this one here. Where we have 80% of the tickets and 83% of the cash is on the over, yet this line's moving down 10,400 tickets in. We have 93% of the tickets, 97% of the cash on the Phillies as well. And this, I mean, the line moving towards the Phillies makes sense. I would, I would be more interested in the Phillies with this type of ticket numbers and stuff like that at home because I know home teams generally do better uh, with the public on them. Uh, but the, all this money coming in on the over and the line moving towards the under makes me want to trust Lance Lynn. And Aaron, uh, and Aaron Nola in this start. Aaron Nola, let's take a look at what the pitchers have done uh, this year. Nola uh, struggled in his first start. Granted, it was against the Braves. Gave up six earned runs on 11 hits, one walk, three strikeouts, and four and a third. On the flip side, in the second game, he faced the Nationals and was much better. No earned runs on two hits, four walks, four strikeouts, and five and two-thirds innings pitched. Lance Lynn on the other side here. I know a lot of people like to bet against this guy. He looked really strong uh, in his opening start against the L.A. Dodgers. Gave up no earned runs on four hits, one walk, five strikeouts, and four innings pitch. Um, when you're able to shut down the Dodger lineup, even if it's just for four innings, uh, Lance Lynn, that was very impressive. And then the following start was kind of confusing because he gave up four and runs on eight hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, and four and two-thirds against the Marlins. So which Lance Lynn are we going to get in this game? Um, I can see this as a better Lance Lynn, um, and the the uh, the markets are telling me under as well. Wind blowing in at about 10 miles an hour, get up to about 13, around 5 o'clock. We could see a little bit of rain in this game as well, so not great, not the greatest of weather conditions in this game here. I'm looking at an under in this game. I can look for uh, first five under potentially here, which we'll be getting a 4.5 at minus 125 on ESPN bet sign me up four and a half when the full game's a seven and a half. That that's a play for me here. Um, it's his first five under four and a half uh, in this game. Uh, and I know trusting Lance Lynn is not the most comfortable thing to do. Uh, but with that being said, I've trusted Lance Lynn before, and I think I think just the the overall betting public is so down on Lance Lynn, which I can understand. He's not been great um, at times. But he has the ability to go out there and absolutely shove. And I could see this as one of those games that he does that. So I'm getting the first five under four and a half at minus 125. I'm going to take the, this first five under uh, here with Philly and St. Louis. I was on it yesterday. I'll go back to it today. Uh, first five under four and a half minus 125 here, Phillies and Cardinals. Nerfy. I could definitely see a nerfy in this game. Uh, Philly's first five run line smash spot Philly's run line maybe Philly run line I it's tricky uh that that uh the the side for this game uh but I don't know um for that one under yeah I, I kind of like this under uh Trey Turner two hits Bryce Harper two hits good luck I'm I'm more interested in this first five under We'll move on. The Toronto Blue Jays and the Seattle Mariners minus one ten pick them on both sides. Uh, total of eight in this game. Uh, let's take a look at this one here. Logan Gilberts and Yusai Kikuchi. Your pitching matchup here. Line opened up at a one fifteen for Toronto. It's down to a one oh five. Line opened up at a minus one twenty. It's still a minus one twenty for the eight. So we've had no line movement on this total, and we've had a slight movement here towards the Seattle Mariners. Fifty percent of the tickets, seventy seven percent of the cast on Seattle. We'll do that. Sixty seven hundred and eighty tickets in. Uh, we have no cash flow on this total here at all. Um, and let's take a look at this pitching matchup. We'll take a look at, uh, it, I believe it's a dome, so we don't really have to worry about um, anything. Yeah, Roger Center, it's a dome. We don't have to worry about weather or anything like that. Um, where we have um, Logan Gilbert coming in. And his first start looked great against the Red Sox. One earned run on four hits, one walk, eight strikeouts, and seven innings pitched. He took a small step back here against the Brewers in this following start. Four and runs on five hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, and five and two-thirds innings pitch. So he didn't look as good against the Brewers than he did against the uh, the Red Sox. Uh, on the flip side here, Yusai Kikuchi, um, 
and his appearances looked really good against the Yankees in his last start. No earned runs on four hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, and five and a third innings pitched. In his opening start, he gave up three earned runs on six hits, three walks, four strikeouts, and four and a third. So, and the market's last game kind of pointed towards backing Kikuchi in that game. Um, and I, I was some for some reason on the over in that game. I remember Kikuchi on the mound. I, I don't feel like making that mistake again. I really don't have an interest in the uh, in the total in this one here. The markets are kind of telling you that the, the Mariners could be the play uh, and expecting Logan Gilbert to pitch well. And then when we look at these potential bullpens, uh, the Mariners, uh, according to fan graphs, have the uh, number 11 rated bullpen. And then the Blue Jays, uh, have the 12. So really no really no edge here in this spot. I would only look Mariners in this game, I think, for this spot, but it's a pass for me here. Yeah. Fan duel got under five at minus 152. This is one thing I'll promise you. This is your new name in the chat. This is one thing I'll promise you on ESB. We will not lay more than a dollar fifty on on things like that. So Thanks for the daily show. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Not a problem. Logan Gilbert over four and a half strikeouts. I can see that. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. No. But, I mean, when you enjoy it, uh, it's not really a job. Um, it's, it's 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 something we enjoy. Kikuchi over five and a half strikeouts. I can see this game being more of an under. So, I can see both pitchers pitching well. Mariners money line. I can see that. Blue Jays equal 1-800-GAMBLER. And pass. Fair. There. We'll move on. To the fall, next matchup here, we already have the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on uh, the uh, Colorado Rockies. Interesting line movement in this game here where the Diamondbacks open up as minus 140 favorites. It's down to a minus 129. Line open up at a 12 and a half. It's gone all the way down to an 11 and a half. So a full line movement, a full run line move down, a uh, full run. And we've had an 11 cent line movement here towards the Colorado Rockies. 94% of the tickets are coming in on the Diamondback, 6,623 tickets in, uh, with the line moving towards Colorado. 50% of the tickets and 98% of the cash on the over. I wonder how much of that's come in on the 11 and a half, though, rather than the 12 and a half uh, that, um, that the, the opening line was at. Uh, not the prettiest of pitching matchups here, though. Tommy Henry uh, taking on Austin Gomber. Um, Tommy Henry in his uh, last two starts. And his first start did not look great against this Colorado Rockies team. Gave up five earned runs on six hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and four innings pitch. And his second start looked much better against Atlanta. Um, and uh, he gave up where he gave up two earned runs on six hits, two walks, five strikeouts, and five innings pitched uh, in this game here. Everything here points to me towards backing the Colorado Rockies in this game. Uh, and then for Austin Gomber, they've won both of Gomber's starts. He's gotten no decisions because he's gone four and two thirds and um, and two or, uh, and, and four innings. Uh, but he gave up four and runs and six hits and three walks, three strikeouts and four and two thirds against this Diamondbacks team. And then he gave up two and runs on four hits, three and runs, uh, three walks, seven strikeouts against the um, against the uh, Rays. Both the games that he's pitched, they won and it's gone over the total. They seem to hit well with uh, with. Um, Gomber on the mound. Now, do I have interest in the Rockies full game? No, I don't trust this Rockies bullpen. Um, and with them being the 29th rated bullpen in baseball, according to fan graphs. And when you look at the Diamondbacks, they're they're middle of the pack, they're 15th, but they have a significant bullpen advantage here. Uh, and it's not not enough for me to want to take five or ten cents more on the Rockies to take them a full nine innings. Uh, when I can get them plus 115 on Bet MGM for the first five. And I'm going to go to that first five innings with the Colorado Rockies in this game over on BetMGM at plus 115. And I believe I think it was Austin Gomber who's been one of the best first five pitchers um, in the last few years, or at least last year he was a really, really solid first five pitcher. But everything points to me here towards the Rockies leading late, and I could see them winning the full game as well. I absolutely could. Um so I would I would lean towards the Rockies full game, uh, but do I trust the Rockies for a full nine innings with their bullpen? The answer is a simple no, uh, for me. Uh, so 
Uh, I'm going to take the Rockies in the first five innings here at plus 115 um, with Gomber. So there we go. Rockies first five plus 115 for me here in this one. Get back to the chat. Uh, Nerfy. I think that was in the over game. Yeah. Uh, over 11. Um, it's down to 11 now. I mean, that line keeps dropping. It tells me Gomer pitch as well. Diamondbacks run line smash spot. I don't see it. Uh, the Arizona run line. Do not see it. Sorry. Uh, leaning over. Fair. Colorado money line. Yes. Did uh, did Arizona team total get there yesterday? No. The game was 3-2 to two yesterday. Uh, yo, yo, yo. What's good, Joe? Kryptonite uh, yesterday. No, it didn't. It was 3-2. to two. Busy, busy, busy. Uh, hope we all good. Yep. Joe, Canadians money line never in doubt yesterday. There you go. I, I don't want to bet in D-backs games no more. They, I always lose. Pass. Fair. I have teams like that too that I really don't have too much interest in betting their games because whenever I, I do anything with them, the opposite happens, type of thing. So I fully understand that. We'll move on. 345 Eastern Standard Time. Uh the San Francisco Giants taking on the Washington Nationals in this game. It's been a fun little series here. We get Patrick Corbin Day. Uh Patrick Corbin and Jordan Hicks. Line open up at a 180. It's up to a 196 for San Fran. Line open up at an eight and a half minus 105. It's now an eight and a half and minus 101. So we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a move towards the Giants uh, anticipating to see um Hicks pitch well. 85% of the tickets are on the Giants, which explains the line move. 10,456 tickets, 10,546 tickets in. 43% of the tickets, 62% of the cash on the Nationals run line here in this spot. And Patrick Corbin is a pitcher that probably gets me in trouble too much uh, because I look for ways to back Patrick Corbin. And I did last game with the first five under against Philly. And I I passed on his first one. He's not been good. He went six innings in his last start against the Phillies. Gave up four and runs on nine hits, three walks, six strikeouts, and six innings pitched. His previous start before that gave up four and runs on seven hits, one walk, two strikeouts, and four and a third against the um, Reds in that last game. On the other side, Jordan Hicks has looked pretty good this year. Uh, one earned run against – he's faced the Padres both times, so he'll be facing somebody other than the Padres, not like the Nationals lineup is any better. Um, he gave up one earned run in his last start on five hits, five strikeouts, and seven innings pitch. And his first start, he gave up no earned runs on three hits, one walk, and – uh, five innings, six strikeouts in that one there. He's looked phenomenal in both his first two starts. I think Jordan Hicks is a strong starting pitcher, and I look for him to have good outings. And I understand the market move towards him. I don't have an interest in backing the Nationals in this game like I had the first two games. And I was leaning Nationals both. I can't believe I, I stayed off the Nationals in that first game against Snell. That still pisses me off. But with that being said, when people are going to continue to be low on Patrick Corbin, I'm going to try to take shots with Patrick Corbin here. And for me, that'll be a first five under in this game. Uh, first five under four and a half. Once again, going back to a, a first five under. Uh, I like the first five unders way better than the full game unders. You guys, uh, if you've seen me, you know, you know that um, I can get minus 110 on the first five under. I don't trust this Nationals bullpen. It's pretty plain and simple. The Nationals bullpen actually ranks 13th in baseball, which kind of surprises me. And the Giants is 21st, so maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the Giants bullpen that we should be looking to fade here. Um, and I don't think Nationals in this game. If I had to bet it, I'm much more interested. I think there's better value on this under though, because uh, I'll look for I'll, I'll look for uh, Patrick Corbin to pitch well, and I think Jordan Hicks has the ability to pitch well against this Washington Nationals lineup. Uh, so I'll take a shot here. First five under four and a half. I'll look for unders in these day games because uh, I can see all I can see each of these first five first five under staying under uh, that we've gone over. So um, I'll be on the first five under four and a half here with the uh, the Nationals and the Giants here. Pat, backing Patrick Corbin, which I know a lot of people love to fade, uh, but yeah. Tommy Henry is not my favorite Arizona pitcher to back. Me neither. Uh, happy Patrick Corbin Day. Nats money line. Um, yeah, Nationals going for the sweep? I believe so. I believe so. 
Uh, happy Patrick Corbin Day. Nats first five. I really like the nerfy. Finally, uh, I literally think the nerfy hits for this matchup. I kind of agree. Uh, Patrick Corbin, nine strikeouts in Washington money line, fourteen to one. I mean, I won't talk you off of Patrick Corbin strikeouts because they'll let him go. They'll they'll let him pitch as much as um, as he wants. So, yeah, uh, no, I, I totally understand Patrick Corbin strikeout prop. I think it's a good look there in this game. We'll keep on moving along here where we have the Tampa Bay Rays and the LA Angels in this game. We have the Rays as minus 135 favorites with a total of nine in this game. This line is moved because it's Soriano now for the Angels. So I wonder when that was announced because this is one of the two games where we've had a pitching, pitching change. Uh, announced uh, for uh, them. Zach Littell on the opposite side here. Uh, Jose Soriano for the Angels. Uh, this will be his third appearance. He's oh, No, his second appearance. Uh, my bad. Because uh, it pops up one, but it says zero innings, so he didn't pitch in that game. No pitches. Yeah. He's appeared in two games. Um, I didn't start either of them. He got three innings against the Orioles, three innings against the Red Sox. This will be a bullpen day for these LA Angels. On the flip side, Zach Littell um, has pitched twice this year, and he's looked amazing in both starts. Toronto, he gave up no run runs on four hits, two walks, six strikeouts, and six innings pitch. Colorado gave up one earned run on five hits and no walks and five innings pitch, five strikeouts in course field, which is very impressive to do, even against a bad, um, even against a bad um, Rockies team. Uh, this line opened up at a minus 138. It's down to a 110. I wonder where the line or where the pitching change came in. Um, this line opened up at a nine at minus 105. It's a it's a nine at minus 112. So kind of an interesting line movement here. Even with the pitching change, I'm surprised this line's moving towards the Angels though, uh, which maybe tells you the Angels are alive in this game. This is a game I really don't have too much of an interest in though, uh, because I like Zach Littell. So I want to only look to back Zach Littell. Uh, even though we did play the over in the first, in his last start, uh, which even though he had a really strong start, the game still went over because the Braves scored four runs or five runs in the ninth inning. So uh, this line move confuses me enough to stay off this game. I really don't have too much of an interest here. Uh, the Angels' bullpen is um, bad. Um, I, I don't think we're splitting atoms uh, saying that. 27th-ranked bullpen in baseball. Uh, so having a bullpen day, watch this means the Angels win the game, but uh, I really don't have too much interest in this spot here. Head back to the chat. Raise money line, smash spot. Pass, lean over, pass. I always lean Angels under, but they've been getting runs and winning games, so pass, yep. Yeah. How about Tampa first five? Honestly, if I want to back Tampa Bay, I want the full game. Because I want the full nine innings of Angel bullpen in order to fade them. So if I'm betting the Rays, and the Rays bullpen has not been good this year. It just hasn't. But I, I think they're just an underachieving bullpen right now because Fangrass has them as the 10th ranked bullpen in the league. I think their bullpen will only get better. And I'll look to back Tampa full games rather than first fives. So I can only look. If you're looking to fade the Angels, I can only look full game. We'll move on here. Chicago White Sox, Cleveland Guardians. Guardians minus 240 favorites. Total of seven and a half in this game. Uh, we have Eric Fetty versus Tanner Bybee. Your pitching matchup here. Line open up at a 235. It's up to a 239 for the White uh, for the Guardians. Uh, line open up at an eight and a half. It's all the way down to a seven and a half now. So we've had a move to full line move towards the under, and we've had a move towards the guardians in this one as well now let's take a look at the cash flow in this game here where we have let's see 94 percent of the tickets are on the guardians the line moving towards the guardians 91 percent of the tickets 98 percent of the cash coming on the under which explains the full line movement down uh towards the under here i'm not a fan of eric fetty though um he's looked really good in his first two starts KC and Detroit, though, are not two teams that I'm I'm thrilled about their offenses, though. He gave up two earned runs on five hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, and four and two-thirds against the Tigers. He gave up one earned run on two on six hits, two earned, uh, two walks, 
and four strikeouts in five innings pitch against the Royals. Two weak hitting teams he looks good against. Maybe this will be a good time to bet against him uh, with a Guardians team that's hitting much better than both the Tigers or the Royals are. And in Bybee's two starts, the Royal, uh, the uh, the Guardians have won both starts. They gave up one earned run and five hits, no walks, nine strikeouts, and five and a third against the Twins. He didn't look great against the uh, but that, but that twin start was a bounce back because he didn't look good in his first start, giving up three on runs and six hits, five walks, and four strikeouts and four innings pitched against the Oakland A's. This will be his first home start of the year, Tanner Bybee, which I wonder what his home road splits were last year uh, because um, he was. I, 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 but this because this is his first start in Cleveland this year. I can only look Cleveland in this game, even though they're very public. I've I've seen numbers behind public home favorites in this price range just dominating. And I can see this as a nice bounce back game for them as well. And I I hate run lines. I really do. And I know I'm going to be laying one today with the Yankees. I hate run lines, but I want to take a run line here with the Cleveland Guardians. And maybe, maybe, and I hate this as well. Maybe the play is just parlaying the Yankees with the with the uh, with the Guardians, and I know that sounds super square as all hell, but I mean those are two teams that I'm I'm confident in for today. Uh, you can get a parlay at plus one fourteen for those two. That might be I might I might take a two teamer there, and I hate parlays, um, but a two teamer with Cleveland and the Yankees I think is a good look for today. I would lean I can only look Cleveland run line. The only problem is Cleveland run line. The best available line I'm getting on that is still laying a number. Uh, it's minus 111 on FanDuel. I can only look in that direction, though. I think they light up uh, light up uh, Eric Fetty in this game. So kind of a tough t- kind of a tough cap for this game. It would be Guardians run line or nothing for me, which I'm very tempted in. But I don't feel the need to have to lay this type of number. I will be doing that with the Yankees, uh, but I will not be doing that. I don't think I'll be doing that in this game. Land by lean by be over five and a half strikeouts. I can see him striking out plenty of White Sox today. Uh, Sox is trash. Guardians added to parlay. Yeah, I I mean Yan- Yankees Guardians. I think is a great two teamer. I truly do. I I think this that'll be a good good way to get the juice down. You're getting plus money for it. I believe plus one fourteen. I think that's the best way to approach it. 1-800, yeah. Uh, Rays, money line. Phillies, money line. Indians, minus one and a half, plus one, five of one. Maybe. Uh, Lance Lynn, under 17 and a half outs recorded, plus 105. Um, I'm on Guardians, two and a half. Yeah, I could see a Guardians, two and a half. I really could. Um, Lance Lynn, under one and a half runs allowed. Uh, yeah. Uh, Guardians had a rough start yesterday and went over. Maybe an under. Yeah, the the, the unders moved a full run line move down. I think if you like the under, unfortunately you've missed your you've missed your spot because this was an eight and a half yesterday. Um, I'm gonna stop humming and hawing on this game. I'm gonna take the run line with the Guardians. Um, and I think I want to tie into a two teamer with the Yankees as well. Um, and I don't advocate for parlays, but I'm gonna test out two teamers a little bit this season with two favorites I really like. I'll test out two teamers. Uh, so, uh, and I think this will be the first one I do is tying up the Yankees and the Guardians in a two teamer. But I also want to take the Guardians run line in this game as well. Uh, so, apologize when I go ahead and bet this, which the best available number I'm getting with the Guardians run line is minus 111. So, I'm taking the minus 111 here. Uh, I do not want to put that much on it. I just want to put that much on it. There we go. Do not need to add an extra zero. That's not a good idea uh, to that. And I would like to see what the best available number is for a potential two-teamer. FanDuel giving me a 245. Do I just stay on FanDuel here and take a two-teamer? Yankees and um, 220 there. Yeah, I'll just take the two-teamer on FanDuel as well. Uh, So minus 245 for the Guardians, minus 220 for the Yankees. I uh, will pay out plus 104 on FanDuel. I'll take that as well. Or it's paying more towards plus 105 range. But yeah, Yankees, Guardians, two-teamer as well will be on my card. So 
Uh, let's track this one as well. We got the Yankees at 220 and the Guardians at 2. Or this is on FanDuel. We can just do it this way. FanDuel. Uh, 220 and 245 at plus 104. So plus 105 odds, actually, uh, for this one here. Plus 105 Yankees and Guardians, two-teamer. There. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, we write that one. D-backs minus 114 now. Wow. Wow. All right. Um, we'll move on. Cubs, Padres. Uh, Padres minus 140 favorites, total eight in this game. You guys know my feeling towards the Chicago Cubs team. Let's get into it here. Uh, we have Kyle Hendricks and Dylan Cease, your pitching matchup here. Uh, line opened up. If it'll click, that'll be cool. We'll head over to the cash flow first when that's trying to load with 92% of the tickets on the Padres in this game. 67% of the tickets, 84% of cash on the over in this spot as well. So a little bit of a line move towards an over. We have this line opened up at a 136. It's down to a one, uh, one open up at a 137. It's down to a 136. So we've got a one cent line movement here towards the Cubbies in this one here. And the line opened up at a 115. It's still a 115 for the over at eight. Uh, so kind of an interesting, uh, kind of really not, like no line movement there. Kyle Hendricks coming in on his third star. He's not looked good in either. Uh, they did get the win in his last start, 9-7 over the Dodgers, but not no thanks to Kyle Hendricks, who went just four innings, gave up five earned runs on two um, eight hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and four innings pitched. And he went up against the Texas Rangers, gave up five earned runs on nine hits, two walks, two strikeouts, and three and two-thirds. On the flip side, Dylan Cease. I don't understand what's going on with Cease. I mean, Cease has looked okay, never mind. Um he gave he's given up two earned runs in both starts. Granted, um, he played the Giants, which the Giants offensively are not the greatest. Uh, and I don't really trust the Giants offensively as much. Uh, he gave up two earned runs in both starts. He gave up two hits, two walks, six strikeouts, and four and two thirds in his first start. He went six innings in his second start, where he gave up four hits, two or uh, two walks, seven strikeouts, and six innings. So, uh, I'm interested in the Cubs in this game. I I I feel like I'm. That's going to be something that I say an awful lot this year. Is I'm interested in the Cubs, and I think it's the Cubs full game because the Padres, according to Fangraphs, have the 28th ranked bullpen, which explains a lot why this team struggled in one run games last year, um, and kind of struggled in general. Um, interesting. They're they're not giving me uh, best available. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'm seeing plus 120 on FanDuel, plus 120 on DraftKings, plus 120 all around. I'm going to stick on FanDuel here because that's just what I have up on my phone, so I don't have to move books for no line difference. I'm going to take the Cubs here in this spot, plus 120. Um, I think this Cubs team as a dog this year will be bet on. Um, and I, you guys know my feelings towards the Chicago Cubs. I, I have a feeling within the next month I'll have futures on them. Um, and I, I'm, I, I think this Cubs team is going to win the National League Central, and they are going to be a tough out in the playoffs. I truly believe in that, um, in, uh, in this Cubs team, and uh, I will, I'll be on them here plus one twenty against the Padres on Fanduel. Padres can't trust Hendricks. Cubs in over eight. Fair. Pass, yeah. Um, Padres are bipolar, good one day, shit the next. They're inconsistent, and that's something you expect from a team that has a win total of 81.5. I do lean towards the over with the Padres' win total. I did have a little bit more high hopes for them as well heading into the season, but I'm very high on this Cubs team. The Cubs make sense. They're plus 1.5 is minus 175. Yeah, I have no interest in laying a number like that on a plus 1.5. That's just not going to happen. Milwaukee Brewers, Cincinnati Reds, minus 135 for the Reds, total of nine in this game. Let's get into the line history in this one here, where we have this line open up at a 130. It's down to a 129 for the Reds. This line did get up to a 134, but it's moved down uh, since then. Uh, line opened up at a nine at minus 105, and it just ticked down to an eight and a half. 
So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards the Brewers in this game here. I've been on the Brewers both games. We lost with them first game, then we won with them second game. 60% of the tickets on the Reds, 4,800 tickets in, and that's all the information we have with the line moving slightly towards the Brew crew in this one here. Wade Miley and Hunter Green. Uh, this will be Wade Miley's first appearance of the year. Uh, he pitched in 23 games last year, started all 23 of them, went 9-4 and four with a 3.14 year and 120 and third innings pitched. He struck out 79, walked 38, gave up 42 runs on 99 hits. Um, had a really nice season last year. It's his first start back, though, which is one thing I kind of want to see what he does first. Hunter Green's been great both uh, starts so far. Uh, great, maybe in the first game, not as much. Four and two-thirds, gave up two earned runs on five hits, four walks, seven strikeouts. Uh, against the Mets, one earned run, three hits, one walk, six strikeouts, and six innings pitched in the 3-2 loss against the Mets uh, in his last start. He looked really good against New York on that one on that spot. Uh, and for me, this is a stay-off game. I'm would like i I'm interested in Milwaukee. It's Milwaukee or nothing for me. But what I'm really looking for in this game is what does Wade Miley look like? Um, and... Uh, if he gets off to a nice start, maybe he's a backable pitcher again like he was last year. I think Wade Miley was one of those pitchers that everybody or a lot of people were not fans of, and he had a lot of value on him last year. And I'm kind of thinking potentially he has the same possibility this year. I'll stay off the first game, though. It's Brew Crew or nothing for me. Uh, but that's the only way I can look in this game is towards Milwaukee. There we go. I'm going to have to do that. There we go. Uh, beer makers money line. I can only look Milwaukee in this one here, uh, but I need to see Wade, Wade Miley's first start. Brewers money line have to fade Miley on his first start or possible live bet. I would like to see what he does in the first couple of innings. Absolutely. We'll move on to our, our, our ESB's favorite team this year, the Miami Marlins. Uh, they're taking on the Yankees. The Yankees two twenty favorites in this game. Total of eight and a half. Uh, I've already tied the Yankees with the Guardians in a two-teamer, but I have full intentions on playing the run line with the Yankees as well. That's my way of doubling up on this Yankees team today. This line opened up at a 210. It's up to a 212 for the Yankees over on Bet Online. Line opened up at an 8.5 at minus 115. It's an 8.5 at minus 112. So we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a move towards the Yankees in this game here. We have 92% of the tickets are on the Yankees, 77% of the tickets, 86% uh, of the cast on the Yankees run line, and me not caring at all because I'm going to continue to fade this Marlins team who was 1-11 to start the season. And the worst I've done, I, I lost with them against the Card. I lost with the Cardinals against the Marlins, and I pushed yesterday with the Yankee minus one. Now today, unfortunately, with the price that the Yankees are at, the minus one is quite expensive. Because uh, if I'm looking at the best available number here, which will be on, looks like ESPN bet, giving a 215 and a minus 105. Um, if I could type in into the, uh, the calculator, right? Uh, we are looking at a minus 161 minus one line. I am not laying this type of juice. And that's one thing you'll never see from ESB is laying stupid amounts of juice, which for me is above minus 150. Uh, I rarely ever do it. I think the only couple times I've done it are with hockey team totals over one and a half. Uh, I've done that. Other than that, I keep my juice below minus 150 because long-term you're not going to win laying that to those type of numbers long-term. Uh, so it's going to be just a plain and simple run line play for me here in this game where I'm going to get the Yankee run line at minus 105, and I'm going to be getting – and then I have the plus 105 two-teamer with the Guardians and the Yankees as well. So that's my way of doubling down on the Yankees today and doubling down on the Guardians today is I have a unit on the run line and I have a unit on the two-teamer. Uh, and I will be – I have both those there. So uh, Yankee run line and then Yankee two-teamer with the Guardians as well uh, for me. In, in for this matchup so that's how we're going to be approaching that we're going to continue to fade the marlins who are one and 11 to start the year one and four on the road ryan weathers is your starting pitcher here um where he in his first two starts he gave up one earned run on three hits three walk uh, three walks six strikeouts and five innings pitching the eight five loss against the cardinals in his first start of the year gave up three earned runs on seven hits two walks uh five strikeouts and four innings pitch this year on the flip side, Marcus Stroman, with this Yankees team that 
looks like the best team in baseball right now. Um, and as, as disgusting as this sounds, if I'm making a power rankings, I'm having the Yankees above the Dodgers. I'm having the Yankees above the Braves. Um, I, I think the Yankees right now are the best team in baseball. Um, and uh, Marcus Stroman has looked phenomenal. Both starts gave up no one runs in six innings. Uh, against the Houston Astros, no one runs on four hits, two walks, four strikeouts. And against the uh, Blue Jays, no one runs on three hits, one walk, and six strikeouts. He's looked great in both games. And I look for him to continue to do more of the same here. I will be on the Yankees run line and Yankees um, in the two-teamer. Yeah. Uh, fading the Marlins, minus one and a half. Absolutely. I'm going to continue fade. And we said this heading into the year, Tim. The Marlins are a last place baseball team. This is more of a fade than anything else. But yeah, um, there you go. Uh, he really likes the Yankees today. Love the Yankees today. I like the spot they're in. I like fading the Marlins with the Yankees, who look so far 12 games in like the best team in baseball. It sucks to say as a Mets fan. It absolutely does. But you got to under, uh, as, as sports betters, your fandom can't get in the way of betting games. If my fandom got in the way, I'd be betting against the Yankees every game. But that's not the case. So, yeah. Uh, are the are the Marlins eliminated from playoffs already? It sure as hell feels like it, right? Yeah. Who are the pitchers? Eh, uh, usually Mar uh, Marlins Nerfy has been profitable this year. Yeah. And here's the here's the thing where um, – let me get up Marlins um, fan graph depth chart. Because here is why the Marlins are not a good baseball team this year. And it's not because overall they're a bad baseball team. Like, they're injured. And that's why I'm picking on the Marlins early and often this year is because who are they missing? Oh, I don't know. Cy Young caliber pitcher Sandy Alcantara, Edward Cabrera, Braxton Garrett, Yuri Perez. I mean... That that's your basically your entire starting lineup, uh, your starting rotation. Other than Jesus Aguilar, your 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 rotation with the Marlins right now is Aguilar, AJ Puck, Ryan Weathers, Trevor Rogers, Max Mayer. That's why this Marlins team sucks because they're both or because the, and their bullpen's not much better. Uh, so um, that that's why I pick on the Marlins a lot because um, their their rotation is banged up. They're missing four starting pitchers. Yankees minus one and a half. Agree. Andrew Benintendi to get a hit. There you go. We'll move on, though. This one's kind of interesting. We have the Red Sox as favorites over the Orioles in this game. Minus 120 with a total of nine in this spot. Let's take a look at the line pitching line, line history here, where we have Cole Irving taking on Cutter Crawford. This line opened up at a 115 for the Red Sox. It did get up to a 120 at one point. It's down down to a minus 111. Line opened up at a 9 at minus 110. Got down to an 8.5. It's back up to a 9. So we've had really no line movement on the side. We have 27% of the tickets and 80% of the cash on the Red Sox, which is very interesting. The Red Sox look like the sharp side in this game. I think I don't I don't think that they that the books put the Red Sox as favorites in this game just for just for funsies, just for shits and giggles. I don't I I truly there's there's no way that, that they put the Red Sox as favorites in this game just for fun. And 50-50 split on the total, which makes sense why the line hasn't moved. Cole Irving so far this year has pitched one game, gave up four on runs on seven hits, two walks, three strikeouts, and five innings pitched. On the flip side, Cutter Crawford, I think, has some potential in this rotation. And he's looked great to start the year. One earned run on two hits, three, stri three walks, five strikeouts, and four and two-thirds against the Angels. No earned runs on three hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, and six innings pitched against the Mariners. I don't think they made the Red Sox favorites in this in this game on accident. And the Red Sox yesterday we saw, and which is why this line, which is why the game ballooned the way it did. The Red Sox yesterday did not did not use any uh, big bullpen arms because they knew the game got away. And I see this as a bounce back game for the Boston Red Sox. And they did not put them as favorites in this game for no good reason. And I will be taking the Boston Red Sox money line at minus 112. That's the way I'll approach this game. Uh, I will take Boston full game because this um, 
this Orioles bullpen, I am not high on whatsoever. Neither is Fangraphs. Um, they have uh, the this. Um, uh, they have the the um, Fangraphs as the Orioles as the 26th rated bullpen, which is bad. Um, so I'll look to fade them here. Uh, minus 112 for the Red Sox uh, in this game. I was on the Orioles first five yesterday. I'm going to flip sides today. Give me the Red Sox full game money line in this one here. I think this line is telling you everything you need to know about this game. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Luzardo is the only uh, good Marlins pitcher right now. Yeah, that's a problem. Orioles money line and run line. Also, Jackson Holiday home run if he's in the lineup. Yes, I can definitely see that. Yeah. Uh, Yankees or yeah, yeah, I'm reading the thing chat. I'm on the Orioles team total. Yeah, I'm, I, I was reading this chat as it popped up as I was trying to read other ones. Um, it's Irving. Books are not high on him. Plus, it's in Boston. Fair, fair. Nerf, the Nerf in the Orioles game was rough yesterday. Dumb Red Sox scored in the first uh, with two outs and then absolutely did, not, did nothing. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, it's money line using my DK money line early cash out up two runs on the Orioles. Hmm. Good parlay Red Sox and Yankees. Yeah, Red Sox plus one and a half, Yankees minus one and a half. Can you do a live reaction stream for MLB? Uh, we do those on Friday. Uh, we'll do those on Friday. Uh, Nerd Talk, Capper Collective. We'll move on here. We have three more games in the MLB, and we continue on with the New York Mets taking on the Atlanta Braves, Jose Quintana, and um, we have uh, Alan Winens. Uh, for this one here, line opened up at a 163. It's down to a 152. So the line moving towards the New York Mets in this game. Line opened at a 9.5 at minus 110. It's a 9.5 at minus 115. 31% of the tickets and 75% of the cash is on the New York Mets in this game. And with the line moving towards the New York Mets. So the sharp money coming in on the on the Mets. The market's respecting it. 5,730 tickets in. Um, And maybe this is just a fate of Alan Winens, uh, who is making his season debut. He pitched in six games, started all six of them with the Braves last year and was not very good. One and two with a 5.29 ERA, pitched only 32 and a third innings pitch, gave up uh, 19 or runs on 37 hits, 34 strikeouts and eight walks, five home runs. Uh, so when ends making a season debut, um, which I believe this could have been Spencer Strider's spot in the rotation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and obviously Spencer Strider is probably going to be out long term. Uh, so, um, and win ends, maybe getting more starts. Uh, Jose Quintana's looked good this year. Uh, four and two thirds in his first start, gave up two earned runs and six hits, two walks, four strikeouts and four and two th thirds innings pitched against the Brewers and then got the win or, uh, uh, he pitched in that three, two win for the, uh, Mets against the Reds where he gave up one earned run on five hits, four walks and four strikeouts and five and two thirds innings pitched. I'm not a fan of this Braves pitching staff. Um, and actually, uh, let's take a look here. Okay. The Braves have the third rated bullpen and according to fan graphs, get this, the Mets have the seventh rated bullpen. Uh, so the Mets have a decent bullpen here as well. I look for the Mets to put up runs in this game, um, against win ends. I would like to fade win ends in this game here, and I would like to fade them with the team total over and the first five money line with the Mets, um, in this game. Uh, I'm getting plus one. 40 on Caesar Sportsbook for the team. Uh, and I'm seeing even money here also on Caesar Sportsbook uh, with the uh, with the Mets team total over, which I'm assuming will be the best uh, available line. Uh, so I'm going to move on both these on, on Caesar Sportsbook here uh, with the um, with the Mets here. Uh, first five plus 140. And team total over four and a half. Um, I kind of want to shop around and see if like DraftKings has a better number, but I, I've, I've seen actually, who do you call it, has decent numbers here uh, for um, for team totals. Is Caesars has decent numbers for team totals. So we'll move on to both of them here um, on Caesars uh, in this game. 
Uh, so first five innings here for um, first a game. No, where is first five innings? There we go. First five innings, Mets plus 140. And then also uh, we're going to lock that in real quick here. Sorry for the delay. Usually I'd be doing this when Tim breaks down the games. Uh, but I would like, uh, but unfortunately, Tim's not here, so I can't. I have to. Uh, I'm going to be doing this uh, as we talk over games. Is betting them, betting them is here. So, and then uh, let's see, um, where is team totals here on um, runs? Would it be runs? Here we go. Uh, home or away runs. I can get over four and a half plus one oh five with the Mets. Plus 105, team total over four and a half for the Mets here as well. So that's how I'm going to move in this game. I'm going to fade win ends with the Mets team total over four and a half and the Mets first five money line at plus 140. Uh, Mets, Braves over nine and plus one and a half. See it. Mets money line uh, line says it all. I kind of agree. Actually, Mets money line. I didn't realize the plus one and a half is minus one forty five. Yeah, Mets lines. Uh, Mets games lines till are uh, till going to move. Uh, still going to move. I can see it. Uh, but yeah, I, I I would lean towards that over nine. I think Quintana can have a good start. I really do. Uh, and Quintana's one of those guys where he'll make he he's not somebody who will overwhelm you. But you'll look up. It's a sixth inning. He went five and a third and gave up two earned runs. That's the type of start he'll give you. So we'll keep on moving on here. Two games remaining in the MLB. We have the Houston Astros and the Kansas City Royals. Minus 120 for the Astros. Total of nine in this game. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, line history here. As we have um, Arga, Arga, Letty, Arga Hetty taking on Lugo, the pitching matchup here. Uh, I think this the, there has been a pitching change for the Astros, which explains probably explains the line movement from the minus 130 down to a minus 115 for the Astros. Line opened up at a nine at even money. It's now a nine and a half minus 105. So we've had a move towards the over. And we've had a move towards the Royals. 93% of the tickets, 98% of the cash on the Royals, 56% of the tickets, and 89% of the cash on the Astros are on the over, the 93, 98, and then the 56, 89 on the Astros here in this one. With the line moving against them, which is which is telling me that this line dropped just with the pitching change. It's all it really it is. Um, and this will be the MLB debut of Spencer Ar Argetti. So I don't have anything on him. I would like to take a deeper dive into him. Um, and on the other side, Seth Lugo has really flourished into this starting pitching role. Uh, he did last year with the Padres. And with the Royals, he's looked good in his first two starts. He gave up no earned runs on uh, two hits, one walk, four strikeouts, and six innings pitched against the Twins. And then he followed that up with one earned run on eight hits, two strikeouts, or two walks, three strikeouts, and six and two thirds against the White Sox. So he's looked really good in his first two starts this season. And I mean, I would look towards the uh, the Royals in this game if I'm looking to bet this one at all. I want to take a little bit more deeper dive into. Uh, this, this Spencer Argetti guy, and I would like to know uh, what his numbers were um, in the minor leagues. Well, let's 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 take a deep dive into Spencer Argetti here. Uh, who so far he's pitched in two games in Triple A this year, uh, where he uh, he had a two point one six ERA and two. And, oh, I do not want the. I'm, you stop stop all right screw this uh so we don't really have too much of a sample size here for our getty uh on for pitching here i would only look royals in this game uh but it's a pass for me in this spot uh let's see yeah uh mets first five plus a half i could see that casey money line Astros money line smash spot. Uh, MLB I tell is Yankees and Guardians bet. Um, Royals first five. 
Yeah, I would lean for uh, those first five. Who is worse, Sox or Miami? I would say the White Sox are worse. Um, that being said, I'll probably bet the White Sox when they play Miami, though. So, uh, but no. Um, overall, I think the the Miami Marlins are still a better team than the White Sox. I think the White Sox have the worst roster in baseball. So that's kind of where I'd look for that one there. Final baseball game of the day, and then we'll move into the eight game NBA card where we have the Texas Rangers and the Oakland Athletics. Uh, we have Ross Striplin and Cody Bradford, your pitching matchup here. Line opened up at a minus 190. It's down to a 172. So we've had a move towards the Oakland A's. Line opened up at a 9.5. It's down to a 9. So expecting Ross Striplin to pitch well here. 97% of the tickets are on the Rangers with the line moving towards the Oakland A's. Um, and 91% of the tickets are on the run line for the Rangers. What could potentially go wrong here? Um, let's take a look at the uh, pitching matchup here. Ross Striplin and his first two starts, his second start look, was much better than his first start. His first start gave up four and runs on seven hits, two walks, six strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Guardians. And his second start gave up one earned run on no walks, eight hits, three strikeouts, and seven innings pitched against the, against the Red Sox. The only unfortunate part about that is they got no run support in that game. Cody Bradford on the flip side here. Um, has actually looked pretty good, too. He's really blossomed to the starting role. Granted, he's been given a lot of run support in his first two starts. Combined 21 runs of run support. He gave up two earned runs on three hits, one walk, six strikeouts, and five innings pitched against the Cubs in that 11-2 win. And he gave up one earned run on no hits or on two hits, no walks, four strikeouts, and seven two-thirds innings pitched against the Astros in that 10-2 win. And they give him a lot of run support, but he's looked really good. This line move down tells me that they expect Ross Stripling and Cody Bradford to have decent pitching performances in this game. And I kind of agree with it here. I can lean towards a first five under, and I'm seeing we're getting potentially a five. Are we really getting a five? Maybe a five and a half. Um, five and a half, or five at minus 110 on ESPN bet, five at minus 105 on Caesars. Bear, I'm interested in this first five under. I am. Uh, that would be the only way I'd look in this game. Maybe a little Oakland first five. I like Ross Stripling. I think he could be a decent arm in this Oakland rotation. We're getting plus 140 on the first five money line here with the Oakland A's. Um, am I interested in getting involved with this game, though? Not particularly. Uh, I would be more interested in this game if the Rangers weren't coming in off of a loss uh, because uh, they had these two teams, I mean, uh, there's a series, whatever, but the, the A's won last night. Um, and I could see this potentially as a bounce back game for the Rangers. Uh, but for me, it would be Oakland first five. Oakland uh, first five under for me would be my two looks in this game, but I'm not going to get involved. Texas run line, Rangers money line, everyone and their mother on the Rangers. It's all over Twitter. I am so close to moving on the athletics in this game. And the more and more I think about it, the more and more I'm interested in the Oakland A's. And let's take a look here. Athletics, 23rd ranked bullpen. The Rangers, 24th. So it's not like the Rangers have a good bullpen in this game. However, I don't trust the Oakland A's bats for a full nine innings compared to the Texas Ranger bats for a full nine innings. Plus 140 on BetMGM. Let's ride the wave. Damn it. Let's ride the wave. Uh, BetMGM plus 140. First five. First five money line here with the Oakland A's. I will back um, Ross Triplin in the first five innings. So uh, let me lock that in, and then we will move on to the NBA um, slate. So let me move all my stuff from baseball to basketball here um, as we click there, and we will switch over to – um, and BA all markets. There we go. Um, and let's get into it. Uh, let me first, let me first, before I forget Oakland first five money line plus one forty bets. All right, cool. And that'll wrap up our baseball card. Um, with the Oakland A's first five, uh, let's get into the NBA here. And this is absolutely disgusting game to start it off with. The Cavaliers, I'm seeing 18 and a half now in this game. Uh, total of 218 and a half. Line opened up, or is it 213 and a half? I just read it wrong. I typed in 218 when it's 213 and a half. I apologize on that one. Um, line opened up at a 16 and a half up to an 18 and a half. Obviously, 
the 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 line the markets are coming in saying that 16 and a half wasn't enough. Um okay. Line opened up at a 210, it's up to a 213 uh in this game as well. Looking at the cash flow, we have 88% of the tickets are on the Grizzlies. Lines moved two points in their direction, 67% of the tickets are on the over, and the lines moved a few points towards the over in this game here. Um and I'm assuming there's there's um I would like to, uh, I would like an injury report here um, for today's games. Uh, I'm assuming that the um, that there are injuries here for the Memphis Grizzlies, which explain which would explain why there are million point underdogs. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, let's take a look. I mean, Morant's still out. Rose is still out. Zion or not Zion. Um, Mark or uh, Smart's out, Bain, Desmond Baines out, Jackson Jr. is still out. This is just a banged up Grizzlies team playing out the strings. Should this be a blowout? Yeah. Am I looking to lay 18 and a half points? Absolutely not. This is a relatively healthy, um, relatively healthy uh, Cavaliers team. Uh, Mitchell is probable for today's game. Um, and other than that, they don't really have too many injuries here. Um, my, obviously, my number suggests there's value with the um, there's value with uh, the the Grizzlies at 18. But I mean, what team wouldn't have value at plus 18 and a half? So easy pass for me in this game. Grizzlies money liner pass. I would just take the points. I would just take the points uh, for that matchup. Moving on, Charlotte Hornets and the Atlanta Hawks. Hawks minus 10.5 point are favorites. Total 218 in this game. Just another double-digit spread that really is not appetizing whatsoever. This line opened up at a 13. It's down to a 12. Um, it dipped down to a 10.5, and, and it's come back up to a 12. So uh, do with that as you please. Uh, this line opened up at a 216.5. It's up to a 222. Uh, with uh, let's take a look at the cash flow here. 89% of the tickets are on the Hawks, and the lines moved slightly towards the Hornets. Uh, this would be one I would have interest in the dog with the Hornets at, at a plus 12. Um, am I really gung ho on taking points with this team? Not particularly. Um, do I do I really want to be finding ways to back? Um, uh, to back. NBA games, the answer is a simple no. And when I'm getting numbers like this, it's just not worth it. I mean, it's Hornets or nothing. I'm not laying 12 points with the Hawks, that's for sure. But am I trusting the Hornets to cover a number? No, I have this game projected around a 10. So I think this this number is not too far off. And there's not much of an edge for me to bet it. So it's a pass for me in this game. Keep on moving on here. The, the Dallas Mavericks and the Miami Heat. Mavericks four point road favorites total of uh, 215 and a half in this game. Line opened up with the Mavericks as uh, looks like a three point favorite. Got up to a six and a half at one point. It's back down to a three. Uh, so we've had really no line movement on the side. Line opened up at a 218 and a half. It's now 213 and a half. So we've had a move towards the um, under here big time. Um, taking a look at the cash flow, 82% of the tickets, 94% of the cash on the Mavericks and the Lions moving towards the heat, which does provoke some interest in Miami for me here in this game. 83% of the tickets are on the over the line, not moving in that direction as well. But I wonder how many of those tickets are coming on that 213 and a half number rather than the 218 and a half number that this game opened at, uh, there, or it's down to a 213 and a half. So maybe a play towards this over, um, as well. Uh, I have this game priced closer towards the pick'em, so I'm actually have pretty decent interest here in the Miami Heat in this game, and I would like to take a quick look at the injury report. Usually, this is where I'd pass it off to Tim and say, "What's the injury report? Why is this line the way it is?" Um, and there's really nothing on the Miami side that suggests that this line should be this wide. Um, and on the flip side for Dallas, um, let's see. I mean, green, that's about it for them. But uh, I'm going to look towards the heat here, getting the points. And I'm seeing the best available number is a plus four on Fanatics. I'm going to grab that and the plus 130 as well with Miami over on Fanatics Sportsbooks. So, uh, 
NBA is the only only sport right now going on that I'm not betting full units on. There are only 0.6 units, 0.3 units on the money lines. So, uh, but I will be moving on Miami in this game. Pass. Heat trash. Mavs will win. Yeah, I, I just think this line's too wide, and I'll take a shot here with Miami. Um, oh, apparently Fanatics is not a plus, um, not a plus four. Uh, it is a plus three. So that so uh, what do you call it? Lied to me. So I'll be getting a. Th- I'll go ahead and grab the three and a half on ESPN bet. Uh, is it still plus one thirty for this game? For on, um, it's plus one twenty five. So I'll move to ESPN bet and grab the plus three and a half rather than the three that they're offering me here on um, rather than the three that they're offering me here on fanatics. When that stamp tells me um, that it's, that it's a, uh, a four. So that's, that was, that was very nice of them to lie to me. Plus three and a half minus half minus one fifteen plus one twenty five full game. So that's where we're going to be moving in this game. Moving on, Toronto Raptors and Brooklyn Nets. Nets 10-point favorites in this game with a total of uh, 222.5. Now, seeing the Nets as 10-point favorites, um, I immediately have no interest in laying this number with an eliminated Nets team uh, where motivation might not be there. But on the flip side, does Toronto have anything to play for? The answer is also no. Uh, open up at a 10, still a 10, open up at a 218.5 up to a 222. So we've had to move towards the over in this game. Um, we have 89% of the t- – or no, that's the money line. We have nothing uh, for the spread. 60% of the tickets are on the over in this game. Really not much of a market to go over in this game. Really not much of a side to go over in this game. I mean, I see value in Toronto, but to does anybody have any interest in backing Toronto? And Maybe that means there's value on Toronto plus the 10 with the plain, simple reasoning of the Nets shouldn't be this big of dogs. Um the Nets just lost, or the the Raptors just lost uh, yesterday. They're on the second half of a back to back, so that that I, I have no interest in this game whatsoever. It's a simple pass here. At two fifteen total, Miami Heat is not making over a hundred points, and that very well could be true. I'm not an NBA guy. I can't stand the NBA, but we'll keep going over the NBA though. Orlando Magic and my and, and uh, Milwaukee Bucks. The Buck are the Magic one point favorites in this game. Total two sixteen in the spot. Um, taking a look at the line history in this one here, uh, where Orlando's moved up to a one and a half point favorite in this game. The open, line opened up with Milwaukee as one point favorites. It's now one and a half towards Orlando. Line opened up at a two eighteen. It's down to a two fifteen. So we've had a three point movement towards the under, and we've had a, a two and a half point line movement towards the Orlando Magic in this game here. Uh, we have 91% of the tickets are on the Magic. 76% of the tickets are on the, the spread for the Magic, which is the one or the pick or whatever. So public all over Orlando in this game, with the line moving slightly towards Orlando, or with the line crossing over zero for Orlando. Uh, 63% of the tickets are on the under in this game here. And this is one where the markets, um, I mean, I would like to fade the public on the on the Magic today and take the Bucks. My numbers suggest value on the Bucks. Uh, I just don't trust the Bucks off a second half of a back-to-back where they beat the Celtics last night. I think this can easily be a letdown spot uh, in this game. Uh, so this will be a pass in this game for me. Uh, it would be Bucks or nothing, but I really don't have an interest in backing them on a back-to-back against uh, after a win against Boston. So pass Bucks game over 240. I mean, I mean defense could be optional. Also, Giannis may not play in this game. So. That, that, that could be also a, a, a factor as well. We'll keep on moving on here. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, 15 and a half point favorites against the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Total 227 and a half in this game. Uh, let's take a look at the line history in this one where it's gone from a 14 and a half up to a 16. So we've had a move towards the Thunder in this game. Line opened up at a 227. It's now down to a 226 and a half. Half move, half point line movement towards the under 67 percent of the tickets are on the under 50 percent of the cash on the under 4094 tickets in nothing on the side uh for this game as well and this is just another game where i mean if you want to just go dog hunting just take points take points take points take points take memphis take charlotte take toronto um take san antonio 
and just take double digits all day long. I see value on those, but I have no interest in actually doing it. Uh, so it's a pass for me in this game. I would lean Spurs, but uh, because I don't know if Oklahoma City really has the incentive to win this game by 17 points, but they, they could probably do that by themselves. So, yeah. Over 222 in this game. I could see that. Or uh, that's last game. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, but we'll keep on moving on here. La uh, two games left in the NBA. The Denver Nuggets, six-point favorites against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Probably the most important matchup of the night. Um, total 212.5. As for seeding, if I remember right, let me take a look where these two teams sit uh, for the playoff picture. Uh, but yeah, this is a battle for first place. Um, and the Nuggets are six point favorites, total to 12 and a half. Uh, the Nuggets and the um, uh, Timberwolves tied for first place right now uh, on top of the Western Conference. Big, big game with OKC, a, a game behind. So the loser could easily go from tied in first to third, um, potentially in this game. Uh, taking a look at the line history in this one here. Line opened up at a six and a half. It's down to a six. It started, it did get down to a five and a half. It popped back up to a six here. Line opened up at a 215. It's down to a 213. And I see value here on the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, at this two number. Or, or I have this game more along the lines of a two and a half, three. Um, the six, I think it's just too many points for the Nuggets to be laying at home here. 54% of the tickets, 98% of the cash on the Nuggets, 5,190 tickets in. The line moving towards the T-Wolves. And 81% of the tickets running under in this game as well. It's T it's T Wolves or nothing for me in this game. And I'll probably sit back and, and, and kind of look at this game a little bit more. Um, but I, I I'm interested in I'm in I'm more interested in Minnesota than I am Denver in this game. Um it's tough fading Denver at home. I do get that, but for me it's T Wolves or nothing in this game at plus six. Uh Bucks money line. Yeah. T Wolves money line ain't gonna go off. I can see the Timberwolves winning this game outright. I absolutely could. We'll move into the last game of the day, and this may be a situ just a plain, simple, situational spot here uh, for me. Uh, we have the Phoenix Suns four-point favorites. I'm seeing four and a half pop up with a total of 226 in this game. Second half of a back-to-back -back these two teams played last night, and we saw what happened last night. Um, and I think I want to focus on the Suns in this game. And I and my numbers disagree with it here because my numbers have the, the Clippers as a favorite in the spot. But I think this line's moving the way it is for a reason. Line open up at a three, it's up to a five. Line open up at a 227, it's down to a 225 and a half. Um, as we have 65% uh, of the tickets are on the uh, Clippers and the, and the line's continuing to move towards the Suns. This is a Suns play for me. Uh, and this is a Suns first quarter, first half play. Uh, I'm not going to play the full game. But I'll, I'll look towards a um, a first quarter here, uh, which the Suns' first quarter. Um, I don't want a team total first quarter. I want the Suns' first quarter. It's a money line, uh, which minus 145 on the money line here. I'm going to shop around for a first quarter money line. I'll lay the number instead of laying the juice there because I can, I can see it getting a little – Dicey there. And then I'm, I'm actually going to grab them both here on Caesar Sportsbook. First half minus two and first quarter minus 145. Uh, that's about at the max of my juice. I, I try to keep it under 150 is where I'm going to try to do. Um, and uh, this kind of saves me if this is a one point game because I, I think the spread is a one one and a half for the for the first quarter. So Instead of laying the, the point and a half, I think, I'm going to just lay the money line here at minus 145, expecting the Suns to come out here and win the first quarter and win the first half after getting absolutely embarrassed last night. Uh, situationally, I think this is a great spot for them. Um, let's see, first quarter. First quarter, minus one, minus 125. I'm going to do that instead. And then the first half, um, where's the first half spread? Uh, for this one here first half spread minus oh it's two and a half now uh so i'm fine with that um in this game so it's going to be first quarter minus one at minus 125 first half minus two and a half at minus 110 i will double down here on the suns in this game the suns for me um 
Oh, it's being annoying. I forgot Caesars is uh, it makes you type out the the bet, not the payout. Uh, so uh, let me see. That would be putting that much on it here, and would be putting that much on it for the first half. So, um, here we go. Bet placed. Suns first quarter. Suns first half. So that's how we're gonna go with this game here. Um, but that is all of the uh the, that was the full card here. Uh here. Uh Joker prop, uh Joker over pro. Suns over points first half team total. That's not a bad look either. Uh, I look for them to jump out strong uh, in this game. But that is the full card for today. Quick little recap, and then we will head on out. Um we're on the Oilers minus 118 against the Vegas Golden Knights. Arizona first period plus 170. Minnesota Twins plus 145. Philly St. Louis first five under four and a half minus 110. Uh, minus 125, my bad. The Rockies first five at plus 115. The first five under four and a half, Washington San Fran. We are on the Cleveland Guardians run line. At minus 111, as well as the Guardians Yankees two teamer at plus 105. We'll see how those two teamers go, and um, if they're successful, I'll look to I'll look to bet them more. Um, but if if they're not, then I will stay away from them. Um, but if there's two teams that I like, that maybe the the run line or maybe the run lines are just too much or whatever, maybe tie them in together like that. Um, and then continuing on there, first five under four and a half, San Fran, Washington, Cleveland run line, um, Yankee run line, minus 105, uh, Cubbies plus 120, Red Sox minus 112, Mets first five plus 140, Mets team total over four and a half plus 105, Oakland first five plus 140 to end the MLB card, Miami Heat plus three and a half, and Miami Heat plus 125, and then Phoenix first quarter minus one, minus 125, and Phoenix full uh, first half uh, minus one ten for the minus two and a half there, um, but that is everything for today's slate. Um, Want to thank you guys as always for watching, and we will got we will catch you guys same time, same place tomorrow for another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. Uh, let me find the outro video. There we go. Good luck, guys.